Yes, staying with cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. Caribbean Premier League matches made a return to Kensington Oval this year for the first time since 2019. And Jamaican fans are hopeful that they too would see a return of CPL matches at Sabina Park. But the fixtures did not list the historic ground as a host across five legs. Back in 2019, the last time CPL was contested in Jamaica, CPL reported a substantial economic performance. This is what they said. The Hero Caribbean Premier League has announced the tournament's economic impact for Jamaica. The 2019 event, which took place between September 4 and October 12, created a total economic impact of 17.5 million in the country, a 66.3% increase on the results that were achieved during the 2018 event. In addition to the economic impact figure, the tournament filled 4,300 hotel rooms in Jamaica, an increase of 74.3% on the previous year, that was 2018. Working closely with the local tourism authority, the CPL also created content that showed why people should visit Jamaica and experience what this culturally diverse country has to offer. Joining us to delve further into the economic benefits to Jamaica from hosting CPL matches are Jamaica Tallowa's owner Chris Prasad and CEO Jeff Miller. Gentlemen, it's great to have you on the Sportsmax Zone. How are you doing? We're doing fine, thank you. Yeah, thank fant you. <laughs> fantastic. So let's start here. Can you give us an idea of your level of disappointment that given the numbers coming out of 2019, the last time the CPL was held in Jamaica and at Sabina Park, that we've not been able to get the tournament back? Well, the, the biggest disappointment really as the defending champions, we don't have the opportunity for the team to play in Jamaica this year. Um, we, we won the tournament last year and we thought by at least winning the tournament, that we would have gotten the support from the from the government to return to Jamaica this year. So we are extremely disappointed, not only from a management standpoint, but from a player standpoint, a support staff standpoint, and the fans around the uh, around the Caribbean. Yeah, and Jeff, we have heard you articulate this point in the past. Chris Prasad, as a first time. Uh, parents here on the sports match zone. Let me get a sense from you about the kind of dialogue you would have had with the government in the past few years that resulted in no agreement for Sabina Park matches? Lance, um, <clears throat> there has been multiple uh, high-level meetings um, in Jamaica and out of, uh, outside of Jamaica. And, um, you know, there, there has been, um, you know, a serial of uh, disappointments. Um, it, it, it leads us to believe that there is a, there's a, almost a strategic um, interest in not supporting um, cricket in Jamaica. Um, you know, and that is even cemented more considering that we won the tournament without the home base crowd, uh, you know, without the, the, the fan base that is, that is needed to provide, you know, the energy for the boys. And uh, we did not, you know, get any support for last year. As a matter of fact, we didn't get any, you know, congratulatory, uh, you know, messages, you know, from anybody. Mm. Um, so, I, you know, I'm wondering um, what would it take to, to bring games um, um, uh, to Jamaica? What would it, you know, from, from where we're sitting, um, it, you know, it's easy. We, we just need support from the government, economic support. We can go into... Um, what it will take or what it takes to run a franchise. Um, it, it, it's a real business, and we've, we've been burning cash in, 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 in the first th four or five years. We, you know, a business cannot continue running um, e e um, at a loss. So um, I'm here and, and, you know, to answer your questions. Mm. Yeah, um, I, want to, I want to get you to explain to our viewers who may not be fully aware of uh, the structure and the sort of partnerships that governments get into with the CPL regarding staging home matches. So what is it then that um, the St. Kitts government, the St. Lucia government, the Barbados government, Trinidad government, Guyana government would have um, 
partnered um, financially with the CPL franchises that the Jamaican government isn't doing or hasn't done? Okay, so so let's let's go back, um, you know, a little, you know, um, you know, higher up uh, um, in 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 how the business is run. Okay, a franchise has four stream of of income. You have the the central revenue, which comes from the broadcast the broadcast you know, rights and so on from from the league. You have gates. Which, uh, which if we play there will come. You have the kit sponsorship, which is from the shirts and so on. And then you have the government um, support. Now the business model that CPL, um, uh, you know, has for these, for these, uh, um, for these franchises, um, the expenses, you, for example, of the, the players' salaries and cricket operation and so on, um, involves all four stream of um, income um, in full play. Now, it, uh, for us, the government uh, support um, is missing. And so we try to operate without your government support, hoping that the government will see um, the benefits. And, uh, we, you know, we couldn't uh, convince them. Now, um, if we were to continue, we would have to continue at a um, lower cost, and that means uh, to play um, in in other uh, venues to join in with the other teams, if you will. The cost is lower. To play in Jamaica, it it uh, it requires more cost for the, all the, the cricket operation. It goes with a, a you know um, separate stadium, yeah. and separate country. Yeah, we have a chart that illustrates the. Um, benefits economically to Jamaica since uh, the Tarawa started hosting matches in the middle of the last decade. And we'd, re we'd present that to give our viewers an idea of uh, what will clearly show actually uh, uh, an increase in, uh, well, this is actually the spend investment through uh, to 2019, where it was just over 1.0 zero seven million for the first year but then that went up to 1.6 million steadied off a bit at 1.6 again 1.8 then down to 1.6 and in the last 2019 22.2 uh, million dollars that was the eight-year period of the jamaica Tallowers and the cpl and the and what was invested but the economic event impact on jamaica which had the platforms of media value, the economic multiplier, visitor spend, organizer spend, shows clearly here from 2014 when the country benefited US 7.5 million, moving up to a high of 11.1 million in 2016 for that period. And then to the last year at 17.5 million. Um, when I listen to you talk here, uh, Chris and Jeff Pryor, um, it leaves you wondering, these charts here show uh, an improving um, financial product from a Jamaican standpoint where the country, country benefits. So it is a little hard to understand then, gentlemen, why the, Jama the Jamaican government not seeing these benefits here or seeing these benefits here would still not, you know, get into a, a, a deal with the Jamaica Talawas to have games continuing at Sabina Park. Jeff, would you take that one? Yeah, well, Lance, um, the economic impact um, it's tremendous. Um, you can see over the eight-year period, there's over $58 million that CPL brings to, to Jamaica. Um, Barbados was out last year, but Barbados got back in this year because they saw the economic benefits. And you can see from the games that are held in, in Barbados over the past weekend, the support. And it's not only that, but it's also the, the development of cricket in Jamaica. Um, it brings out the, the, the youngsters, the, the under, under 19s, the under 23s, to see cricket life, to see international players life, for, for guys to come and train with these big international players. So it's not only that economic benefit, but it's the growth and the development of cricket in Jamaica. And that's one of the things that is missing. Um, and, and, and the hotels benefit. So look, um, we're wondering why the government have not seen the benefits over the years. And I'm hoping that the JCA, um, the corporate Jamaica, and um, Jamaica government will all get together 
in spite of being quickly battered to make it next year. Yeah, gentlemen, in the past, the CPL, when in Jamaica, has been played at Sabina Park. There is a suggestion that maybe if we explored moving matches to, let's say, in Trelawney, which is uh, closer to the tourist areas of the country, then um, maybe the tourist board would become more interested. Has that been explored at all? Yes, that's, that's a discussion that we had uh, um to have the way CPL is set up now is perfect for Trelawney because, as you know, there's no lights at Trelawney. But CPL is, is have morning games and have evening games. So so the situation of playing games at Trelawney is perfect uh, for the situation that develops now with CPL. So, um, yes, we have explored that, and that's one of the suggestions that we have made um, to the Ministry of Sports and the Tourist Board that um, let's utilize Trelawney for the morning games and Kingston, uh, Sabina could be held for the evening games. And how is that suggestion being received or how has it been received? Well, look, okay, we can see we, we, there's no game this year. Uh, and so, so that, that would be the hint of, of what has transpired. But look, um, we, we are still in discussions and we hope that uh, things can turn around and um, we will be back in um, Jamaica next year. Yeah, I, I just want to get clear um, specifically on that point as to when those discussions would have started because maybe after you leave this interview we might get a text message to say well those discussions started rather late so it could not be done for this year and um, we had to start looking at next year so can you kind of give us a timeline as to when you would have gotten to that stage of the discussions january the proposal was submitted to government in january of this year is mm. that proposal uh, proposal was submitted, um, including some of the charts that I saw you had um, on display. So um, that process started a long time ago. Um, it wasn't two months, three months, but um, January was when the proposal was submitted. And I think we met with government in November or December um, because the proposal was submitted in January. But, but gentlemen, um, Jeff is talking you know, about this year. But, but in just about every year, in prior years, um, Trelawney was always on the table. And uh, we, we, we would play at, uh, at, at Trelawney if, if the support is there. Um, it was always a, a, um, um, an option to, to play a few, uh, some of the games there. I think we had to play five games, two at, at Trelawney and three at, you know, in Kingston. But um, that, that, you know, um, was, was discarded in prior years. And even in this year, like Jeff is saying, it was, you know, presented again. And uh, we didn't get the, the response that, uh, that, that is needed uh, to bring the games in Jamaica. Has the reasons, well, have the reasons given by the government to why they would not be able to give the support or they have not been able to give the support. Have those reasons been consistent or have you been getting different reasons um, in different years? Um, I'm hoping that you would help us find the reasons why they're not supporting the Talos or the fans will. So you, but, you, you haven't, so been, far, given, you haven't been given any? Yeah, um, look, we got the reasons from these numbers are, are not, uh, you know, uh, numbers that, uh, that are believable to, um, you, know, uh, you know, cricket is not, you know, as popular sport in Jamaica as, as it was, um, but not officially. That is from, you know, people, you know, on, on, uh, you know in the House of Government, not at a very high level. The real reason, I don't know. Mm. All right, Chris and, and Jeff. A few years ago, rumors started swirling around about Jamaica losing the Talawas franchise to somewhere else, whether Florida or somewhere else in the Caribbean, obviously triggered by some of the difficulties that you speak of now. Is that still a possibility? No. Um, after, after we played the games in 2018 in Florida, uh, we met with government the after. And they pledged that all the games would be played in Jamaica. And um, that's where the team is based. 
and that's where all the games will be played. So that commitment was made, and we made it in the proposal uh, back then. We made it in the proposal 2019, 2021, and the last year it was in that proposal again that all of our home games will be played in Jamaica. Uh, well, it's the Jamaica Talawas. So um, after 2018, that, that was off the table. Mm. But I'm a little confused here because you said there was a pledge or a commitment. Was that commitment and pledge coming from the government about staging matches in Jamaica? And why would they make that commitment if it is that they know that they need your support? And to continue playing in Jamaica as business people, it wouldn't be viable for the Talawas to continue playing in Jamaica if you're not getting the government support. Well, that, that was in 2018, 2019. We got support, but then COVID came in. And, and then, you know, things, the economics changed. Uh, but the economics changed all through the Caribbean. And the other islands still continue to see the value that CPL brought to the respective islands. But Jamaica didn't see that. And, um, and that's where we were. But 2019 is where that, that uh, engagement came into play. But Lance, um, Jeff, Jeff is talking about support in, in 2019. But the support that came is really a fraction of what is needed to, to really sustain the games, um, to, you know, the, the operation in, in a... Yeah. In a so, so, Chris, in, if I'm understanding you correctly, when the Jamaican government supported the team to the extent that they did, are you suggesting that the support was less than the support other territories are getting from their governments? A small fraction. By a, it, it's a small fraction of what the other territories, um, you know, are receiving, are, are giving to, to the other franchise. Yeah, I, I want to pick up on a point um, that I think you mentioned, Chris, and you, uh, you pointed out that it was unofficial, that it, it was not coming from official sources. Um, but the point about cricket being a dying sport in Jamaica... And, and try and follow me here, because in recent years, I can't recall a cry from a track and field organization that has not been met by the government. We've seen cries from netball, where the government has stepped in and supported that. We've seen calls from um, football, the reggae girls, the reggae boys, where there has been support. Um, have you thought that in, in, in a situation like this, that maybe, maybe um, the thought process is indeed that the sport of cricket um, is dying within the country um, and or is just not close to the top of the priority list at this stage, and that is part of why you are not getting the type of commitments that you would like from the government? You know, I, I, I think it could be a little of all of, of the above. And, and if, if that is so, it is unfortunate because what we are seeing is, is um, cricket blossoming in all the other uh, Caribbean territories. Um, in, 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 in Guyana, it is the most, uh, is, it is the most popular event of the year. I believe the same is in Trinidad, in, in St. Lucia, it's the same thing. So, um, um, it, you know, if that is, and that is why at the beginning I said there might be a strategic, um, uh, you know, direction that the government wants to take, um, in, in, in the way they, they, uh, they assign, you know, um, you know, support. Um, but, but what I want to, to appeal here is that the support is really not um, um, given for nothing. The economic impact as of four years ago was $18 million, right? And, and that is the real economic impact. Plus, there, there are the social and non-tangible benefit that, uh, that, that the event brings. So, um, you know, if it is dying, it, you know, I, I, 
I would like to join with the government and bring it back to life. Look, we have a multi-million dollar stadium in, in, in Kingston. We have a multi-million dollar stadium in, in Trelawney. We have a huge fan base, because I could see them in, in social media, that, 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 are, that are following, you know, what's going on here. Um, and and it, it, I, I believe that the stage is set for the revival of cricket in, in Jamaica. And I, we are ready um, to come, but we cannot operate um, continuously at the loss. The, 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 there's a four-legged stool here um, in, in the revenue streams, and I, I call them out uh, um, already. If one leg is missing, the stool falls over, yeah. and that's what we have. Yeah. W what type of money are we talking about quickly? Because we're, we're almost out of time. Um, you, you know, without you know getting into into specifics for for Jamaica, um, um, I can say that in the other territories, uh, the the support has been ranging anywhere from seven fifty to north of a million, right? Um, and that is the loss um, which uh, which you know we'll be seeing, or even more um, when we don't uh, play in Jamaica, because there are you know benefits also when you're you're playing in Jamaica as a home territory. So 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 as it is to to avoid to that that revenue not being there, we have to cut costs and operate um, in other um, territories and sort of um, get you know efficiency um, uh, you know scale. Mm. All right, we're out of time. Um, gentlemen, it was a, a pleasure speaking with you on this issue. Um, clearly, we need to have more discussions on this and hopefully sometime we'll be able to have an in-depth discussion with the Minister of Sports as well, um, the Honorable Olivia Babsy-Green. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Thank At the track is going to be next.